Hey there, Steve here, hope you're doing well. Over the past six weeks, I've been on this deep dive into the way that math rock guitarists and math rock adjacent, well, I'm not gonna lie, it was a lot of Midwest emo guitarists. I can't help myself, I just love the style so much. Um, well, how they write songs. I did all this for my new math rock songwriting system workshop, and today I'm gonna share some of the secrets that I learned during that deep dive, and I'm gonna show you how you can take just one idea and take that idea and make it into a full song. So the first step in this system is idea generation, and this is the perfect time to take the idea that you always whittle around with, that you've always dreamed of turning into a full song, but you've never bothered doing it. I laugh because I have plenty of ideas like this, and I want you to take the idea and you can use it for the rest of this system. But if you don't, this is completely fine. I'm pretty sure there's a few viewers here that have got different ways that they come up with ideas, and if you could share those below, that's really going to help out. However, here's a quick method that you can use now to come up with an idea that you can use for the rest of this system. So I'd like you to take this chord progression, an E major 9, a C sharp minor 9, and then a B major 9. And I want you to do one of two things here. I either want you to strum this chord progression in an odd way, or I would like you to go through the same chord progression, but pick it using an odd kind of uh, math rock style of pattern. And to do this, I want you to take inspiration from guitarists that you like and songs that you are like. That way you likely start developing something that you are happy with and is more in the style that you are happy with playing on the guitar. In our case, of course, we're going to be doing some kind of a math rock kind of style here. So for example, with the chord progression recently, there's this song uh, Bronco by Covert that I've listened to a million times and there's a section in that song that has this kind of like really odd kind of strumming pattern and I'm going to apply that theme here to these three chords. <laughs> And if we're to take the opposite approach and look at picking patterns, for me, a lot of influence for me for picking patterns comes from Japanese math rock, or when I think about the Taiwanese band Elephant Gym as well, they have these kind of like really funky rhythmic picking patterns. <laughs> So now, if you do have an idea, it's very likely that this idea is a good idea, and it's an idea that you are happy with, and it's in the style that you are looking for, and is setting up the direction for your song. But there's a good probability that your idea sounds too repetitive, and in math rock, this is often something we want to avoid. So let's fix that. Adding variation to my ideas is a lesson I've learned over and over again the painful way in my songwriting journey. When I write songs for my band Mountains, I would often write parts and I could write a full song where all of the parts complemented each other and have this overall kind of shell, an overall song that I would then take to band practice and be like, check out my new idea uh, to the band. And they would be like, yeah, I like the idea, but I could tell something was wrong. And a lot of the time it's just like, this idea is just, it feels stale after playing it, you know, a couple of times. So I'd always be very defensive of my own ideas. You know, this is my baby, how dare you? <laughs> you know, we're not changing anything. But after a bit of back and forth between us and the band, largely it was always um, Ali, the Ali, the bass player who wanted to, let's recommending like, how about if we extend that idea or if we play it at half time or how about we add some stops here and add some silence and pauses just for, you know, some variation and just to make the idea, basically, it was never explicitly stated, but that was the purpose just to make it more interesting. So to spare you those experiences, I do ask from now on that you try to experiment with adding variation to your ideas. There are tons of ways we can add variation to our ideas to make them feel less repetitive and more importantly, be more like that math rock style. And one of the most simplest ways we can do this is just to vary the technique we use to play something. So if we take our covert strumming example from earlier, <laughs> So it's just begging for having something in between those strumming parts where I'm playing the dead notes. And that's where we could apply a picking pattern to vary the idea. So now... And that starts to vary the idea, it starts to evolve the idea. Another way to add variation would be to simply just change some of the notes in the chord as well. We can do like that. 
and down here too. And then we can apply that same picking pattern with these changes. And um, if we want to take that to another step, we can even start introducing inversions of these chords, chords as well. So uh, we could have, instead of this chord, we could have this chord. Instead of this chord, we could have this chord. And instead of this chord, we could have... And then you can imagine this kind of um, application being applied here. So it's like an evolving idea with variation. Let's say that cycle goes on for a bit longer, then we could bring in the next part. And then we could bring in that. Instead of going back to the, you know, the listener's probably going to expect to come back to hear that sound, but instead they're hit with this the variation. And we can apply that same variation of picking pattern to this as well. So I could keep on going there, but hopefully this is starting to fire some ideas in your brain for your ideas, for adding variation to your idea. So now we have a good idea of how to make that idea more interesting. The next step is, well, how do we write more sections of our song from this initial idea? And that's what we're going to do in the next part of this system. So during my deep dive for the workshop, I was listening to a lot of math rock songs and trying to work out, well, how do they take an initial song idea and create more song ideas from that? Not gonna lie, it was a complete headache trying to work a lot of this out, but I was really glad I put in a lot of the effort because there was a lot that I learned. And from this, I was able to create distinct approaches that a guitarist could use to create further sections for a song. In the workshop, I go into more detail about those, but for the sake of simplicity for this video, I'm just gonna share a few that you can use now. One of the most straightforward ways that we can create extra sections for our song is an approach I call the same idea different approach. For example, we could take a strummed chord progression and play that using a picking pattern instead, or we could have a picking pattern chord progression and we can play that using strumming instead, you know, vice versa. So an excellent example of this is the song Pool by the Japanese band Trico. So they have this strumming pattern in the introduction of the song. <laughs> the same idea, different approach, same chord progression, but they're picking it instead. And then it switches to this half time from 5-4 to 3-4. So we've applied, this, <laughs> we've applied the uh, same idea, different approach again, if I could play and talk at the same time. But basically we've got three song sections from one idea. So that's the power of the same idea, different approach. Could we write an, an entire song this way? Well, I guess we could, but it would end up sounding a bit too similar. And uh, therefore it's better to combine this with other approaches. And before we move on to look at another approach, let's do the same thing for our chord progression example. <laughs> We're starting with a strumming pattern, so to apply the same idea, different approach, we could use that picking pattern instead. For a slightly more complex but equally as effective in generating so extra song sections for our song, we have what I call the variation on theme approach. This is where I discovered guitarists will take an idea, the theme of that idea, and then uh, apply that to another idea within the song. So this is where we would have like a, a similar picking pattern that's taken and then applied to a different chord, let's say, that evolves the idea into another section. So for instance, if we take our, you know, that strumming pattern that we have. <laughs> We 
Maybe we want to take this and apply it again later in the song, so it's a variation on that theme. However, we probably don't want to do all the dead notes, um, we probably might want to use a, a new chord progression, so we could fumble around a while, find another chord progression, so for example here, here's one I made earlier, let's say, um, we're going to go a G major 9, E, E, E minor 9, sorry, I can't get my chords out today, and um, what's the last one? Um, an F major 9. Now I'm going to apply that, the theme of the original idea, i.e. the strumming pattern to this, but I'm not going to put the dead notes in this time. already get the feeling of that it sounds like maybe it's a middle section maybe it's like a transitional section you know within the song but we don't know yet for sure because we haven't got all the other parts we're just in the development phase at the moment but this leads us on to the final step in this system it's like how do we connect these ideas so for example if we've got our picking pattern right <laughs> How do we go from there to... The jump sounds quite jarring, right? And this is, like I said, the last part of this puzzle. This is where we are going to look at transitions. So essentially what we need here is some kind of glue to try and bring these ideas together. And let's look at some of the most common ways that math rock guitarists do this. As you already probably guessed, there are tons of ways that we can transition song ideas, basically how we can uh, put them together. And in my deep dive into math rock songs, I did discover a number of ways. And again, I categorized those. So guitar could take them and apply them to their own song ideas. Let's just focus on one or two of these and apply it to the, the song idea that we've been creating through this video. One of the most common ways to transition between song sections is purposefully creating some kind of transitional idea to sandwich between the two sections. These could be extra little riffs, extra little chords, it could even just be strumming uh, in a chord at a different dynamic level. Basically all of these little things are going to signal to your listener that there is a change coming into another section. And these transitions can be either quite contrasting and jarring in nature or they can be stylistic in choice um, you know have bridging the gap in a nice and pleasant way it all depends on the feeling that you are going for so let's look at adding a transitional idea between our first section the you know the chords and the that picking section there so as I know at the moment the way that I've written this part we're going to end on this inversion here this B, B major 9 inversion. So I'm going to use this to signal the change into the next section. You see there, what I did was um, end up with that strum like we do in the original idea, but I thought if I could take the pattern same idea, different approach, and apply that to this last chord. That sets up the... It, that is the transition that signals to the to the listener that there is going to be a change here. And now we're into the second section. We also need to think about, is this idea too repetitive? Can we add some variation? could add some stops like that, right? Or we could add a... Add even, you know, shorten, add even more of a pause to it. There's obviously tons of things we can do in the application there, but I'm starting to hear drums, I'm starting to hear how this section's going to flow, and making it more Mafian style by adding some stops and sudden stops and starts like that is, um, well, it's very math rock in nature, right? So that leads us on to how can we transition from this section into the third section of our song? And as we discovered, it was quite of a, you know, a jarring transition, which is completely fine in math rock. 
In fact, a lot of math rock guitars will, uh, sorry, a lot of math rock guitarists will make use of this abrupt change from section to section, and it can be wonderful, a wonderful contrasting way to uh, change suddenly uh, between song sections. But for my song, I kind of, I don't want any jarring transitions, so to speak, so I'm going to make more of a stylistic choice. I'm going to find um, a transitional idea I can sandwich between these two, and it's probably going to be some kind of chord. So if I'm on this chord to begin with, <laughs> I think I can use an idea to go from here to lead up to this chord here. So I'm going to put in this minor 9 chord here, this F sharp minor 9 chord, to get to this one. But we need to work out the rhythmic change here. some variation. Just off the top of my head with improvisation there, but um, I think that chord really works well there as my transitional idea. I'd have to hash it out a bit more, but I'm definitely onto something there. So we're now well on the way to finishing this song idea. We've generated three song ideas just in this session by using a few of these different approaches, looking at how to making them, how making them more interesting by using some variation, and how we can effectively bridge the gap between these sections using some variation. And what I'm hoping is that by following this system, you're much more likely to end up with ideas that complement each other. You will also start wasting time by having a clearer direction to the songwriting process, you will also start to develop your own songwriting skills and your own unique voice on your instrument. And lastly, you're much more likely to avoid ending up with a song full of redundant ideas. There are plenty of other considerations as well, like the song structure itself, the direction that you're trying to take the song in, and you know, getting feedback on your ideas or self-assessing your own ideas. All of these I do go into detail in the workshop, so if you are interested in that, there's a link for that down below in the description. If you want to learn more about math rock guitar tech, Techniques that you can apply for your songwriting, then I suggest checking out this video next where I go over some of the essential techniques. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.